Hello, welcome back to Revender in Sports and another edition of what is in our stand today. Today we're going to talk about replacing rim brake pads on a carbon wheel and uh, carbon specific pads. So we'll talk about that in just a minute, but before we get going, if you would please to support the channel, if you could subscribe to the channel and like this video so that uh, YouTube finds it and says, oh, that's a pretty relevant type of video. Let's promote that and move that up in the searches. So, um, and also before we get any further, I'd like to thank um, the customer and soon becoming friend uh, for allowing us to use his bike as a prop and for filming, for being behind the camera. So thank you so much. Okay, so what I'd like to talk to you today about uh, talk to you about today is uh, carbon brake pads, carbon rims, and the installation of a brake pad. So one of the things that's very important for anyone who is riding, and yes, people still ride rim brake bikes. So the carbon wheel manufacturers spend a lot of time and research with the, the brake compounds that they use uh, so that their rim brakes, especially like a carbon clincher like this, so that the rim um, brake track here does not delaminate under excessive heat. So it's very important that if, let's say, you're riding NV wheels, that you ride an NV brake pad or a known substitute, something that they agree is a, a very good pad that will work with their brake compound, I'm sorry, with their rim resin and carbon fiber layup on their on their wheels and if you've been around long enough you will know that a lot of rims when they first started doing these carbon clincher rims they were delaminating and the catastrophic failure when these wheels would just heat up the rim brake track would just literally explode on a rider so um, it's very important to use the correct brake pad compound. So a lot of manufacturers, Envy, Reynolds, um, Lightweight, and so on and so forth, they have their own specific pads. Now this is a Bontrager wheel, and you could use the Bontrager pads, but in a lot of cases, what a lot of people don't realize is that Swiss Stop makes the pads for a lot of these rim manufacturers, and you'll just see Swiss Stop, but then maybe you'll see a name of that rim manufacturer there because this is all they do is make brake pads for disc and um, rim brake and they make rotors for disc brake so this is in my opinion typically an upgrade from let's say a Shimano pad or a SRAM pad uh, the Swiss stop is usually an upgrade okay so let's get started we've talked about that the brake compound is important. So this particular wheel being a Bontrager wheel, you can use the Flash Pro from Swiss Stop. Now, if you look at this, these have a left and right pad. It's just because you'll see that at R, so that's the right side and then the left side. And really what, why that's important is because you want the forward part of the brake pad and the brake uh, carrier to point forward. It's just the way it is. By the way, you could also see that there's a, a line here that tells you when the pads need to be replaced. So there's a wear indicator on there. Okay, so first things first, we are going to put the pad in. Oh, this washer here, you'll notice it's concave. So that faces into the, into the brake pad holder so that you can move it around and position it properly. Because what we're gonna talk about in a, in a minute or two is the brake squealing that sometimes you encounter with carbon rims and carbon brake pads. 
Now, just for sake of time, I had removed the old pads. So this would be a lot faster to put this all back together. Okay. And if you look, that says forward, but another way to, to know which way it goes is this little um, set screw here keeps the pad in. So if the wheel's going that way, the wheel's going forward that way, when it applies the brake, the pad would want to shoot out. So that is a retention bolt. Okay. So let's put these guys in here. Now the positioning isn't important at first. You just need to get these in here. And as I've mentioned in other videos, you want to use your hands, put stuff in finger tight first because you want to make sure you're not stripping something. Then you put the wheel in and the quick release lever goes on the non-drive side now once you put the wheel in before you adjust your pads it's very important that excuse my back for a second that you center that wheel properly in the fork and if you notice it did move a little bit so you, you center it lock it into place excuse my back put it back in your in the stand or if you're using something on the floor okay now what we're going to do is we have to align the brake pad if you look closely here this brake track is only about a finger width apart so that's where this pad must sit so you want to make sure it's not up on the edge or down here where the decals are and you can see the textured part is different from the rest of the rim so what i do is i squeeze the brake so i can see where it's landing and i realize hmm that's too high let's bring it down a little bit that's still too high. And basically, as long as you can get it pretty close, it seems to want to either be too high or too low. So we're struggling a little bit, but we'll get it. Now this particular fork I notice has a cutout. That's not common. Usually forks don't have a cutout like that, but this one does. Okay, so that looks pretty well placed. If you look closely, it is below the rim and above the decals here. So we're gonna tighten that down. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side without you seeing it. But the next thing I'm gonna show you See, this side was nice and cooperative. So the next thing I want to show you is when you look inside here, you'll notice that the pads are fairly flush. Like they're hitting the front and the rear are touching the rim at the same time. And that's going to create a little bit of noise when it's time for you to apply the brake. So what's, what is the best setup is you want the pads to be towed in. You've heard probably this expression before. You want the pads, the front part of the pad to touch first and then collapse around the rim. So what I have found works pretty well is just a typical business card folded in half. I put it on the back portion of it of the brake pad and what I want you to do or what I want you to notice is right here you'll notice 
this is going to shift just slightly once I loosen this nut or this bolt. And when it shifts that little bit, you lock it back into place. And what you'll notice now is when I hit the brake, the front pad or the front of the pad is touching and the back of the pad isn't touching, okay? And as you keep squeezing, it will collapse around it. All right, so we'll do the same on the other side. I'm not a lefty, so <laughs> this is hard to do because normally I would just turn my whole body around, but then you would see my back and that's not good. So I'm gonna loosen that a little bit. Pinch that business card down. And if you look, I'm, I'm pinching down the business card, but I haven't loosened it up yet. And see, there's a gap there. So once I loosen up this bolt, that's going to collapse and the front of that pad's gonna touch. See it? It just automatically just sits right where it's supposed to be. Lock it down into place. And now you take that business card out and it should be front of the pads touching first. And then as you squeeze the rest of the brake, then the rest of the pad touches, the rear of the pad touches the rim. Okay, so this is important because when you Yep, I'm confirming that. So now what you could see is the brake pad is touching in the front, but the back isn't. And that'll keep your brake pads from squealing when you apply them. So thank you so much for tuning in today. That is how you install brake pads on a carbon wheel. You do the same type of process on an aluminum rim, but to be honest, they hardly ever squeal and they hardly ever make any noise. But on a carbon wheel, it's very important to get that brake pad to toe in and front of the pad touch first, the rest of it collapse around it. And, um, and it's, again, very important to use the correct compound. I had a customer the other day, he had a set of specialized Reval wheels and he thought any brake pad would work. So that's not how it works every brake pad, or I should say every rim has some type of uh, R&D done on it and the brake pad has to be specific so that it, it, it doesn't overheat and damage your rim. Okay, that's all for today. If you would please subscribe to the channel. If you found it informative, please share it with someone else and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you so much.